Welcome back everyone to the hello world guys this is the first episode of our new series in which we are going to create a mario like platformer game using sfml in the previous series i basically showed you how sfml works it was a beginner series so this is a more of an advanced level series in which we will use classes and stuff and try to create a mario like platformer game so let us begin so uh, currently i've got a project uh, set up and i have added a file called main.cpp in here and uh, in here i have already set the including and library stuff so if you don't know how to set up and install sfml then watch my mm, other series in uh, other videos in which i show you how to do that and for now basically we are going to continue from this point so yes how are we going to do that uh, well uh, let's first of all create a window so i'm going to create an sf colon colon window and we are going to call a constructor which we are going to give a video mode which will specify the size of our screen which i'm going to set to be 800 uh, on the x axis and 600 on the y axis you can obviously set this to whatever you want then we are going to provide it with a title which you can set to whatever you like i'm going to set it to sfml mario and that should create our window now we are going to go ahead and add a while loop here which is going to have a condition saying window dot is open by the way we forgot to name this variable so make sure that you name it like that and now we are going to uh, inside the while loop we are going to use the window dot poll event function which uh, basically takes a event from the window uh, and i'm going to create a sf colon colon event called eve and we are going to use this e now we want to take all of the events so we are going to say while window dot poll event and we are going to say we are going to uh, inside of this while loop we are going to check if, uh, check if e dot type is equal to sf colon colon even colon colon closed which check if the uh, basically it will check if the user had just pressed the close button if that is the case we are going to say window dot close all right and after that uh, that is basically uh, pretty much it for setting up our basic window loop uh, and now we should have a window that's completely white and we can actually close it and it is no longer in a not responding spe uh, state so we can close the window so yeah that's pretty awesome now we are going to actually get started with the game alright so now we, since we want to do drawing in this window we want to change it from just a window to a render window which is a special type of window essentially and now we can call a function called window dot clear this is essentially clear the window and you must call it each time when you are drawing and obviously we are going to provide it with a color uh, with which to clear the window and I'm going to just put a uh, RGB value of a sky like color here and then I'm going to in the end do window dot display and between these two lines we can essentially draw whatever we want so if I start the game what you should see is that we have got a window which has got a sky colored background like that now we can actually start drawing stuff inside of here now for this we are going to actually follow a really organized approach in this series because uh, this is going to be a little bit of a complicated game uh, you can make it simple obviously but we are going to make it a little bit of an advanced game so it won't be really, really you know wise to just put everything uh, inside of a main file and not use any organization tools so in this uh, basically in this uh, series we are going to use classes and uh, a different kind of other strategies to actually do that in a uh, efficient manner so for this we are going to create a new class for the player so I'm going to go ahead and say add and hit new item and in this new item you can choose a C++ class now uh, essentially uh, the idea is that for the class we will go ahead and we you might go ahead and choose player uh, and you might go ahead and uh, try to even more generalize that by choosing a class called entity now this uh, entity class uh, will uh, or maybe you can uh, make it character so uh, if you want to follow the unreal engine way of doing things you can call this class a character and let's go ahead and add that class which is going to bas basically have everything like this and uh, is going to have no base class and no anything else so just go ahead and hit ok and it should uh, automatically create the class including the header file and the other file as well so let's go ahead and get this so we've got a class here okay uh, what am i doing <laughs> uh we've got a class here called character now uh, this is obviously pretty awesome but uh, what do we want to do inside of this character class and i'm also going to open up character.cpp which is just including character.h for now so this character dot uh, class will essentially contain a couple of functions and variables that is common to every character whether player or enemy now uh, this class will essentially contain uh, like the functions going to be public obviously so we are going to add a two functions here one is going, going to be a void called draw another one is going to be a function called update now uh, these two will essentially uh, their purpose is kind of obvious this the first one will draw stuff to the screen and i'm going to move this update one first so this will handle the logic while the draw will handle the drawing and for that draw function what we are going to do is we are going to uh, actually we are going to include the sfml 
uh, slash graphics.h file here as well and here we are going to uh, require a render window called window as well since in order to draw we need to have something to draw to so we are going to add this now uh, how are we going to implement these functions well the idea is that uh, essentially uh, since uh, this is going to be uh, a character class and not going to be just a template for other classes we just want to use it for polymorphism and not actually to you know do stuff so we can actually make this an absolute uh, virtual function or what do you call it by saying is equal to zero now it's only uh, uh, causing a little bit of problem because this function needs to be virtual so we are going to call this to be virtual like that uh, virtual void and we are going to change this to be a virtual void as well uh, but we are obviously going to set this is equal to zero which means that this function is essentially not implemented and now this class is going to be is, is basically an abstract class now which means that you cannot actually create a instance of this class but you can use uh, you can inherit from this class to do stuff so yeah so this is pretty much it for this video in this video we basically set up our working environment in the next video we are going to actually create a uh, you know uh, player from this and uh, you can obviously see that this character.cpp was not necessary but uh, visual studio actually created that for us so we can actually go ahead and just delete this character.cpp because uh, this uh, class has got no uh, I'm going to delete that because this class has got no implementation as of now so we can just delete it so in the next video we are going to inherit a player class from this and implement that so stay tuned for that I will see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe as well and bye